So one of the things that we think about in our summer awakening is, again, to be awakened to the presence and to the power of God in our lives. And uh, hopefully throughout this summer, as you know, we have been uh, shocked and quarantined by a virus. We have been uh, uh, intimidated by violence in our society. And it's now hurricane season upon us. Um, Karen shared with me something on uh, YouTube not too long ago, and it said, well, I was kept in my house by a virus and then by violence and then by a hurricane. I don't know whether I should buy a respirator, a revolver, or a roof. Anyway, um, one of the things that we remember in terms of all the unrest and the confusion in our society is that God is in our midst. And God has been here before. God doesn't get a virus. As a matter of fact, God is very healthy and he is watching over everything we're doing. And in the long run of time, God is going to see us through this. And he wants us, he wants our message to the world to be in the midst of all this turmoil and change. I have tremendous peace because my God is able to see me and all of us through this problem. Lord God, today again, we uh, think about how you are with us. And we look at the scriptures today from the book of Psalms. And we also think about Paul's letter to Corinthians that when we think about God's presence and how he provides purpose and gives us guidance and direction in our lives, sometimes the world sees that as foolishness. As the apostle Paul said, he called it foolishness to the Greeks. But for us, it's the power of God. And it's giving us hope and faith in the midst of these crises that are facing us. We pray for our world. And God, we ask that you would guide us again and speak to us through the word each day. And as we learn from David's psalm today, that we would turn all these problems into praise to you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Sue Corbett's going to come now and sing a special uh, music. You can hum along if you like, but we don't give you the words. But if you knew him from Sunday school from years ago, you're authorized to sing as much as you want at your own risk. Sue, thank you so much for coming to sing for us. How great thou art. Oh, <laughs> 
Our scripture today comes from Psalm 145. It is the last of David's Psalms in the book of Psalms, the ones that were written by him. Hear the word of the Lord. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works. and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of the Lord all look to you. And, excuse me, the, all, the eyes of all look to you. And you give them their food at their proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. 
The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Here ends the reading of God's word. So as we're gathered together today, can you hear me okay over there in the far right? All right. As we gather together and uh, we're seeking God's wisdom in all that we do, I want us to just think for a moment and just pause. I want you to think about your own family, wherever they are right now. And in your own personal way, just lift them up to God right now. Just think of your family wherever they are. Maybe even say them in a whisper by name and lift them up. And as you're doing that, thinking of your family far and wide, I want you to think of your neighbors here in Mariner Sands. Recently, you know, we've had some real setbacks uh, with the, the loss of some of our neighbors. Yesterday, we uh, had an earnment service for one of our neighbors, Ruth McIntosh or R Rhodes, Mary R McIntosh Rhodes, excuse me. We also have, uh, we miss and we are grieving about the loss of Jean Nace. Jean Nace passed away this last week. There's such great pressure in all of the news media on politics and politicians. And it, I want us to say that we need to pray for our politicians, not just those who are elected, but those who are running, that God will give them wisdom and discernment so that they will rule righteously and govern judiciously in the sense that they will do things that are good for the family and good for our society. Let's remember those who are in government today. I heard from Jeff Birch. He's a chaplain on board the USS Bonhomme Richard. Everything Jeff has on his stateroom is gone. The chapel is gone. The chapel offices on the Bonhomme Richard are gone. And uh, in the midst of loss for all the sailors on the USS Bonhomme Richard today, we, we intercede for them and their loss as a result of that tremendous fire in San Diego this week. Jeff's doing okay. The other chaplain that, the, that Jeff serves with was literally walking on the pier to the ship when the explosion happened. And God saved that chaplain. Had he been 10 minutes earlier, something much worse would have happened. So we thank God how he is Somehow his angels are watching over everything all at the same time. And that is a mysterious wonder. Again, one of the great works of God. Oh, Lord God, you hear our prayers. You hear those that we're interceding for. Lord God, we pray that you would work a miracle in our culture and in our country today. That you would watch over our leaders that you would watch over those who are sick, those who are, have fallen asleep, those who have experienced grief of a tremendous sort. Comfort them, almighty God. Give them today a rich dose of your grace and your peace. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Usually on Sundays, after a time of prayer, we say together the Lord's Prayer. But as a very special thing today, because it's summer and we can do this, Sue is going to come and sing for us the Lord's Prayer. Show. 
Thank you so much, Sue. So when we think of this psalm, Psalm 145, a psalm of David, it says it's a psalm of praise. Karen, okay, I'll come forward. Get in the shade. Can you see that better? Okay, good. Uh, it's a psalm of praise, and it's the actually it's the only psalm in the book of Psalms that starts off with this heading, a psalm of praise, a tahila, as it's called. That's where we get the word tahilim, which is the book of Psalms in, in Hebrews. And the 21 verses in this psalm are actually an acrostic. That means that every verse starts with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And uh, that makes it kind of a unique structure when we study it. He starts out by saying, every day, every day I'll praise you. Because David knows that every day has its own problems, but because God is with us and God is with David, Every day also has its opportunity for prayer and for praise. Throughout the psalm, it talks about the nature of God, that God is not only great, but that God is also gracious, that he is righteous, and that he is near. All of God's works tell of his greatness. And that word tell and speak throughout the psalm is used seven or eight times. And it's, it's saying to us that if you just look around, you will see the great works of God because they are speaking on God's behalf of all that God is doing in our midst. The three sections talk about God's mighty acts. And then it talks about life in the kingdom. Not only in the kingdom at the time when David was talking, uh, when David was leading Israel, um, but it was a time when this kingdom, right now, God is in his kingdom and it is about his kingdom, but it also foretells about the future kingdom when everything will be completely well and restored. The kingdom today is alive, but it's alive in a broken and fractured world. There will come a day when we will be in his kingdom and everything will be restored and repaired. There's also a section, the last seven, four verses, talks about deliverance and how whatever you're going through, God will deliver you and God will deliver all those who have faith in him. And that is something that we need to say to our children and to our grandchildren as they are trying to look at all that's going on and they don't know how to put it all together they're talking and texting and they're sharing on uh, social media. And what we as wise elders need to say to them is hope in God. God will deliver us just as he has delivered everyone who trusts in him. This is not the very first pandemic that God has experienced in this world. It may not be the last, but it is with us and God is going to help us through it all. The Lord is faithful in all his promises, it says. And then it says, of course, the point is this. The more we know of God, and the more we know of his greatness in our midst, the more it stirs within us the opportunity to praise him. So it's easy to complain, very easy to complain. But God has said to us today, Get over your complaining. Start praising. Don't tell God about your problems. Instead, like David, tell your problems about God. And if you do that, you will get a different perspective that things aren't nearly quite as disastrous as they seem because God's got this. It's just a time. It's a time we're going through. And this time will pass. There are a couple words for time in the Bible, and you've heard me talk about it before. The first word is chronos. Chronos is a Greek word that uh, is where we get the word chronology. And it comes from the Greek mythology of the god Chronos, who was a short little god with, with sturdy legs, and he had long hair in the front, and he was bald in the back. And uh, so it's kind of like, a, I guess that's a reverse mullet, isn't it? So... Uh, but the reason why he had long hair in front and uh, bald in the back was because when Kronos, who had wings on his feet, ran past you, there was no way that you could catch it. And that is the symbol, that's the symbolism of time, is that it comes at you fast, but once it's gone, you can't get it. 
you can't get it back. That's the measurement of time. That's human control over time. It's minutes and seconds and months and years. And that's what we use to manage our time. But God has a different word for his timing. It's called kairos. And kairos is a term that's like an archer's term. When an archer is aiming his arrow, that word kairos is the trajectory and impact that the arrow requires to pierce its target. And what I mean by that is that how this applies is that in God's timing, sometimes the, when the target is far away, the archer has to aim in a different direction to create kind of an arc so that the arrow will eventually land exactly on target. Logic would tell you to aim directly at the target, but the archer knows that to hit directly on the target, you've got to aim at a different place. And in the same way, when we think the target is to, for God to answer our prayer and, or, or for troubles to cease in our world, we have to aim our prayers at God, not at the problems. Aim our prayers in a different direction toward God and in the arc of God's mercy and grace, what he does is he acts on our behalf and does more than we can ask or even imagine according to the love that he has for us. One last thing I want to live, leave with you. It says the eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at their proper time. That may be one of the verses that God was, that Jesus was thinking about when he said, give us this day our daily bread as he was teaching us to pray. That God gives food to everyone and everything in its proper time. Isn't that a wonderful thought? God gives us everything we need pertaining to life and godliness. When we draw near to God, our lives are different. We become more like God. What is the New Testament corollary to this? Draw near to Jesus. Jesus gave us instructions of how to follow him and draw near to him. And with Jesus in our hearts, he gives us that kind of hope and encouragement that we need each day that we need to share with one another. By faith in God, because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross, we have access. We don't have to go to a temple and wait for someone else to intercede for us. We can go boldly and directly before God Almighty. And because of what Jesus did for us on the cross and in his resurrection, we're able to pre present our needs to him and he hears us. And he does miraculous things in our midst. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as I look out over the parking lot today, could you use a miracle from God today? You know, God doesn't want to do just small little things. He doesn't want to just give you a tip of his grace. He has an entire boatload of grace that he wants to bestow on you. And if you need a miracle today, whatever that might be, maybe just a miracle of a change in your spirit to just say, I'm going to stop looking down and start looking up. Maybe it needs a miracle of hope to say, I'm going to look forward to what lies ahead and stop looking at what is behind me. Maybe it's a miracle of timing and just say, God, I missed things this month, this week, this season. I couldn't go on things as we saw on, uh, there was a quote on Facebook, another one says, uh, I told my airline luggage that we're not going on vacation and now I have to deal with emotional baggage. And so uh, there's a lot of setbacks in our timing. And, uh, and, but the thing is, is maybe God has great opportunities for you in his timing. So as we think about that, let's remember just how close God is near to you. His greatness, his grace, his righteousness is to you. So that we can say with David, how great thou art, how near God is. And his praise is always on my lips. Amen. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks so much for joining us on YouTube. And uh, we will see you again.